Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. I know I am a little bit early, so I will give people another few seconds to hop on. Um, in the meantime, I'm just going to give a quick disclaimer that I live in a building, so you may hear children crying, you may hear doors slamming. It's just the nature of the environment, so please forgive me. <laughs> All right. Let's jump in. So the name of my message today is Finding Hope in Hopelessness. And I want to start off with asking you guys, how many of you, just leave me a hand up in the comments or wherever you're watching from. Um, by the way, this is streaming on, on YouTube as well as Facebook on my Facebook page. So you're catching this from two places. Regardless of where you are, leave me a hands up if you have ever been in a hopeless situation. And this could be, you know, financial troubles, could be family troubles, just any kind of situation where you did all you can to avoid it, and yet here you are. Or you weren't even thinking about ending up in a situation like this, but yet here you are. And, um, and it's not pretty. You are frustrated, probably. You are probably quite highly stressed. Um, you probably are trying to find a way to come out of the situation um, and nothing is working, right? So it's really, really frustrating. You're just stuck, right? You're stuck. You can't find your way out. A lot of us know what it is to be stuck because we get into places where it's like, well, how do I see my way out of this, right? So you know that feeling. Just get a sense of that feeling in your head. Um, today, I want to submit to you that it's very possible that your setback is actually a setup to a victory that is yet to be revealed, right? You're going through something. And again, I think one of the keys of this message is the fact that you haven't done anything wrong. As a matter of fact, you did all the right things and here you are. And so I want you to just consider that this situation is actually part of the plan. So outside of just thinking about the victory, I want you to think also in terms of the transformation because it's very rare that we're in a situation that is not working on us in some way, shape or form. Uh, to illustrate this message, I wanna share a story, if that's okay. I wanna share a story about a man named Joseph. You may know him, but if you don't, here's just a quick backstory. Uh, Joseph is one of 11 brothers and his brothers hate him. You know, just not even holding back, they hate him. Um, it could be in part because he might be a bit of a show off. He might be a bit of a, you know, arrogant. I don't wanna say arrogant, but you know, just someone who's just kind of kind of subtly showing up themselves in one way or another to their brothers. So Joseph is actually the favorite of his father because Joseph is the son of uh, Joseph. Jacob is Joseph's father and Jacob is in love, in love with Joseph's mother. Jacob's father is also married to her sister. The woman he loves, he's married to his sister as well. You guys think the Bible is boring? You need to get in there and get the tea, okay? There is drama. And the reason why Jacob loves Joseph so much is because he is the son of the woman that he loves so much. And his 11 brothers were born to the other woman that he doesn't love so much. Anyways, Joseph's brothers get together and decide to kill him. But of course, there's one brother that's like, let's not take his life. You know, they threw him into a pit, ended up throwing him into slavery. Excuse the messages going on. Um, ends up throwing uh, throwing his brother into slavery, which is basically human trafficking, not to be confused with sex trafficking, but selling their brother into slavery because they hate him so much. Joseph ends up um, helping Potiphar in some way, and Potiphar is like the commander in chief to Pharaoh. He ends up helping Potiphar in some way. I think he pointed out someone who was being dishonest. There was like dishonest scales. He was charging him more for whatever. 
And Potiphar liked that. So Potiphar gave him like a top position in his house. Um, only for Potiphar's wife to get handsy with Joseph and make a move on him. And Joseph said, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to dishonor my master and I'm not going to dishonor God. That's for sure. So she cries out and lies about being harassed by Joseph and Joseph ends up in jail. Talk about a hopeless situation. I mean, it was hopeless from the beginning when his brothers didn't like him. Um, you know, some people point to the fact that Jacob had given jo Joseph, so his father had given him this really nice coat and he went to his brothers to show him the coat. Is, is that maybe a little bit of showing off? Maybe, I don't know. We also know that Joseph was a dreamer. Joseph had dreams um, and we'll talk more about his dreams later on. Joseph had dreams that would come true. We'll, we'll find that out in the end, but he would have a dream and go and tell his brothers and his father, I had a dream and it means that you're gonna be bowing down to me one day. Now, why would you share something like that? I mean, I'm the kind of person that I will know things and not say anything just because I don't have the evidence to, to prove it and people are not gonna believe me anyway. So I will just keep it to myself, but he went to brag and tell, well, I, I shouldn't say he went to brag, but he felt like he needed to share this. He felt like he needed to show off his fancy coat. So maybe this is why Joseph is in the predicament that he is, God wanted to humble him. But at the same time, from the outside looking in, I feel like, well, what did he do that was so wrong? You know, he wanted to show his new coat. He wanted to share about his dreams. Maybe someone could give him some feedback. We don't know what happened. So I'm going to read from the book of um, Genesis just to show you the point where, to me, it became super, super helpless for Joseph. So I'm reading in Genesis, Genesis 39, verses 20 to 23 in the New King James Version. And it says, then Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison. So this is after the wife calls harassment. His master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were confined. And he was there in the prison. That's a whole sentence, by the way. It starts with a capital, ends with a period. And he was there in the prison, but the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy. And he gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners who were in the prison. Whatever they did there, it was his doing. The keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority because the Lord was with him. And whatever he did, the Lord made to prosper. So let's focus on a couple things in the scripture. One, it says, he was there in the prison. I found it so fascinating that that was a whole sentence. And he was there in the prison. And let's think about it. From what I've observed, prison is not a lovely place to be. Prison is not nice. And depending on the prison you go to, the security and the warden there, they don't treat a lot of prisoners favorably. They treat them like they're scum. Or maybe I watch too much movies. You guys let me know. Let me look in the chat. Maybe you guys are telling me, Sandra, you watch too much movies. <laughs> okay. No, not too much movies. Okay. So from what I know, these are not pleasant people. Okay. They don't treat the prisoners very nicely. So he was there in the prison. Prison's not a lovely place. And remember, you might agree. Did Joseph do that much wrong to be thrown into slavery and thrown into prison, accused of something he didn't do? And now he's in prison. But look at the gifts. Look at the gifts that he gets in this hopeless situation. The Lord is with him, which to me is the biggest gift. If you're going through any storm, anything turbulent, the Lord is who you want to be with. The Lord is who you want to be with you. So the fact that it says that the Lord was with Joseph, that brings a level of comfort that could change your frame of mind altogether. Okay. The Lord showed him mercy. Again, whatever he did that maybe God didn't agree with, he showed mercy in this situation, right? Maybe God didn't agree with him bragging about the dream and sharing about showing off his coat and he wanted to humble him. Now you're getting a humbling, but you're also being shown mercy, right? Or maybe God is not in it. This is all the devil playing his tricks. And 
God is still showing him mercy, right? He's not going to let him be subject to what other prisoners might be subject to because of the security and the warden that they have to deal with. So showed him mercy. And then the Lord gave him favor in the sight of the prison keeper, right? Again, prison keepers are not always shown in the best light. In movies, tell me again, <laughs> like tell me yeah. if I'm speaking weird stuff right here, let me know. But to be shown favor in the sight of the prison keeper, it's like, who are you to be so special, right? There was something very special about Joseph. And I want you guys to think about your gifts. I want you to think about some of the highlights in your terrible situations. Maybe you can't see it right now, depending on the extent of the situation. I'm not talking about people who you know, are grieving. They just lost somebody. There's something really terrible going on. Um, I'll give you an example. When I was diagnosed with cancer, one of the first thoughts that came to me was, how am I going to use this in my marketing? Because I have a business and I have to run my business. And this is now going to be a part, something that consumes a part of my life. And now how am I going to integrate it into all of what's going on? Right. So you tend to look for, well, what are the highlights here? What can I look to that is hopeful, regardless of the situation? Um, again, in the beginning, I spoke about there's trans there are transformative things that are happening. Depending on the situation that you're in, there are transformative things happening. And it's for you to identify those things. That's what's going to help give you some patience. Right. You're building your patience. You're building your faith. You're getting a better understanding of the situation. You're being stretched and grown in ways that you could not do if you were not in this situation. And at the same time, you are most likely being prepared for another level of life. So think about the gifts. No matter the hopeless situation, the way that you find hope in a hopeless situation is you think of the good. There's, there's good, in, there's two sides to every corner corn. There's two sides to every coin, right? There has to be some ray of light somewhere. And a lot of times I know for me, and I think I might've mentioned this in a video I did on Instagram some time ago, God tends not to show me things while I'm in my feelings about it. You know, he kind of just jams back and he's like, you know, I'll let you go through what you're going through because you're not going to see it. You're not going to accept it. You're not going to understand it while you're in your feelings about it. You're way too distraught. You're way too frustrated. You're way too stressed. You just, in a way, you kind of just want to be there. You don't want someone coming to tell you, oh, it's going to be okay and things are going to change. That's kind of the mindset that you're in when you're going through a hopeless situation. But then God reveals everything in its time. So just think of those gifts. Um, now, I have a bit of a digression. I actually baked a digression into this message because I want us to think, Think about the fact that we don't always get what's fair. The way I keep referring to the fact that I don't feel like Joseph did anything so horribly wrong that he deserved to be sold into slavery and uh, be thrown into jail. Um, just think about the fact that we don't always get what's fair. We could be working and hustling hard, trying to get our business going, doing all the networking, doing all the sales calls, doing all the things, and still nothing happens. And it's not for us to turn and say, well, God is not being fair. It's for us to turn and say, what am I missing here? What am I not getting? What's the message in this season? What's What transformations are happening? These kind of things really help to bring a lot of light to the things that we're going through because it shifts our focus from just being all about the situation and puts us into thinking about what's to come. There must be something greater coming based on what I'm going through. So he's not always fair. And, you know, I kind of, I relate it to um, God's parenting style. I think about, you know, you, maybe if you have siblings, maybe it wasn't always fair that they got to go and do things that you didn't get to do, or you had to do things and they didn't have to do it. And it's similar because God sees what we need more than the things that we want. Yes, we want to just be free of lack and have abundance. Yes, we want to just throw away all these extra pounds and be slim and slender and fit and healthy. But a lot of times it's in the disciplines that he's teaching us that 
brings us to a place to be able to sustain those things when he finally brings it to us. So we have to kind of embrace that a little bit, embrace that we don't always get what's fair, but again, it's that two sides of the coin thing. We've got to think of what are the lessons there? What am I learning? What's what's What new thing is happening? Um, so there is hope for us um, in those situations. And I want you to also consider sometimes we're in a situation a hopeless situation because of something that we pray for. For example, I'm on a journey to wealth. I might have mentioned this before. And it's quite possible that if you want to get to like this mountain, I don't want my hand to get out of the shot, but if you want your hand to get to this, if you want to get to this mountain, you got to go through this valley. Let me, let me turn it around. If you want to get to this mountain, you got to go through this valley. And the valley is dark and it's too hot or it's too cold. And there are all kinds of scary things there. But we prayed for this. <laughs> we prayed to get here, but we have to go through here. There's no escaping it. It's the only way. It's the only path. And it's those who get through those valleys that actually make it to the hills and the mountains that we've been praying for. So sometimes you got to think, you know, you're praying to God for something, but there's like a trade-off. God is not going to just shoot us up to the finish line without us having to go through the race, right? We got to go through those valleys ourselves and take from it what is in there, what is meant for us to be grown and shaped for that mountain that we're going to. Um, and again, when the situation is no fault of our own, this is, man, does it ever <laughs> get really dark when we can't see what we did wrong? Isn't that, you know, what we kind of do when we're in certain situations, we start to think, well, what did I do wrong? And you start thinking about, well, maybe I could have done this differently or that differently. Or you know what, tomorrow I'm gonna get up and do this, or I'm gonna do that, because we feel like there's something that we can do or that we have done to create the situation. But a lot of times, I believe, it's just God doing the plan, doing his plan, working in us what he needs to work in us, growing in us what he needs to grow in us. And, and it's not always pretty. We can't have it easy all the time. I'm gonna be doing a message soon um, and, I go a little bit deeper about, you know, what we have to go through um, as believers, right? It's it's not easy. A lot of Christians will tell you, <laughs> you, you kind of sign up for, uh, you know, faith a faith obstacle course. I used that term the other day. You sign up for a faith obstacle course that takes you through all these things and each thing is growing you and shaping you. And this, therein lies our hope. Because now we can look and say, instead of saying, my, oh, my hopeless situation, we can look and say, ooh, what is he preparing me? Like, this is this hurts, right? Like, I've been in some hurtful situations, and I feel like it's only God that can help me, and it hurts. But then coming on the other side of it, you're like, you know what? It had to hurt because this whole hopeless situation, this whole hopeless experience has moved me to a place to never want to be there again. So what do I got to do this time around for me to never be there again? And sometimes you need to be in those deep places. So you just feel like I am not going back to that. So let me do what I got to do. Right. So um, so examine the situation for the gifts that are in it. Acknowledge the growth that is happening in the situation. You know, Joseph going to prison um, was a gift in the end because ultimately he was running the whole land, right? So I mentioned that I was going to touch back on the dreams. You know, his level of dreaming was next level, right? God would give him messages and visions of things to happen and things that were going to come in the future. And so when Potiphar again, was it Potiphar or Pharaoh? Where's, where are my Christians uh, in the chat? <laughs> was it Potiphar or Pharaoh who... Um, who wanted his dreams in, interpreted. And, um, you know, he just kept having this dream. And then while Joseph was in prison, he met two prisoners and they both got released. And when uh, 
Potiphar or Pharaoh was having trouble interpreting his dreams, one of the men from the prison who had been released and was now working with Potiphar or Pharaoh again said, you know, I met someone in prison who's able to interpret dreams. And so Joseph was released to go and interpret the dream. And basically the dream was saying, listen, we're about to have seven years of um, harvest and then seven years of drought. So it's better that we save up what's coming so that we can help and heal the land when the drought comes. And Joseph is put in charge. He's put as second in charge in all the land. And now his brothers have to come to him, not even recognizing that it's Joseph, because I think, I guess by now they might've thought he was dead. Not even recognizing their brother, they come to the head, the second head in Egypt and saying that they need grain and Joseph plays with them back and forth. and throws one of them into jail and they still don't know who he is. Anyways, it's a whole thing. You have to read your Bible. Like, if you're not reading your Bible, you're missing out on the juicy tea, right? You're missing out on the stories and all the anecdotes and the things that make us say, okay, because now we can apply these things to our life. But basically he ends up running all the land and isn't that the blessing in disguise? Would he have been the second in in charge in all the land had he not been thrown into this hopeless situation? I think not. <laughs> I think he would have been at home tending sheep with his brothers if his brothers didn't hate him enough to throw him into slavery. You know, and that's the devil working in his brothers to say throw him and throw this, throw this good guy into slavery. That's the devil working in Potiphar's wife to say, let me go and, you know, see if I can have a little way with him. And then him ending up in prison and then coming out and going through all of this journey only to end up being the second in command in, um, in prison. And, uh, you know, I'm going to do a bigger message on this, but I just want to point out that when you, when you are gifted in something, people notice. People notice. People want to work with you. Right. And so this is why I feel like it's important to identify your gifts. You're in a bad situation. Think on the good things. You know, well, what can I use from this? How can I apply what I'm learning here and then see what comes of it? People will see your resilience like, oh, my gosh, look, how you came through this. Do you mind coming and giving a talk to 100,000 people at this conference about how you did the thing? You know, you don't you never know how certain things can impact your life. And it's just it's just so super important to keep a positive outlook on things, you know? And I know it's not easy. I, I'm not sitting here talking about like, listen, I do this all the time. God has brought me through some things. And each time <laughs> I'm in a hopeless situation, it's the same thing. Why God, why is this happening to me? Okay, well, maybe I need to do this. Maybe I need to change that. But God, you can come and do this. Like, why is this happening? You're mad and you're frustrated with the world. And it's a whole big thing when all you have to do is say, <sighs> take a breath and just say, where's the hope? You know, where is the goodness in this? How are you gonna use this for good, God? How is this going to create a difference in my life? And I can personally say that I've never had a drive like I do today because of some of the things that happened last year. I was in real, real hopeless situations, right? And I, I think I talk about it in another video, or there's a video coming where I talk about it. But, um, real hopeless situations where you're just, you know, my heart was broken because God was not just giving me what I wanted. <laughs> my heart was broken and I'm, I was frustrated and I was stressed out. I got into a car accident, which was like cherry on top of the entire thing. And it was, man, oh man, it was ridiculous. Um, not to alarm you guys, it wasn't a serious car accident, not every, not, no one was hurt and the damage was super minimal, but still my car hit another car and it was a thing. Anyways, we get in, I was in this situation and I was frustrated and I was stressed out and I just felt like, God, you can fix this. Like, this is actually a situation I've been trying to avoid for more than a year. So I've been doing all the things. I'm not, I was never big on networking, but guess who's a networker now? <laughs> guess who goes to all the things? Guess who's doing phone calls when she has to, and I'm not a phone call person. Guess who's doing all the things and still falling into this hopeless situation. And so despite my frustration, I just, you know, I put on my worship music, first of all, Worship is the best way to just cleanse 
what's going on in your mind and gain new perspective and literally like scare the evil spirits out of the room right i strongly believe that the devil cannot stand to hear us praising god so when i put on my worship music and i can just flow into that and gain perspective i'm able to say you know what god coming out of this situation i feel very strongly that i don't want to be here again <laughs> so i am so super motivated and so super driven that here i am doing a live on a Sunday, which typically I would just be kicking back and trying to prepare for the week. Um, but I wanted to be here to share this message. This has actually been a message that uh, when I started Bible in a year last year, this message came to me very early in the year and I've just been sitting with it. Um, and now having gone through the year that I went through, this message makes so much sense. God gave it to me at the beginning of the year, knowing what I was gonna go through. And now that I'm on the other side of it, and let's be honest, I'm on the other side of it mentally because there are still some things that have to happen for me to feel like victory is ours. But mentally, I am just out of there and into this new perspective. I have a lot of hope and I am looking very forward to the victory because I know it's coming. So that's my story on <laughs> finding hope in hopelessness. Um, before I close, I wanna share um, that one of the things that we can also do when we're going in hopeless situations is to get connected with your friends and your family, whoever you consider to be friends and family, because there's nothing better than having people in your life who are going to cheer you on, who are going to champion and pray with you nothing helps you more than to just get down and pray with god how many times and i'm pretty sure a lot of you have been through this how many times have you been in a helpless situation and you go to pray to god a lot of times i write my prayer so i'll go to write my prayer to god and um midway through i just feel alleviated i might have gone into the prayer frustrated god what is going on here i'm doing this i'm doing that and then it turns into but your word says that all things work together for the good of those who love Christ according to his, you know what I'm blanking out there, <laughs> according to his purpose. Um, your word that says that all things are possible um, with God, uh, that nothing is impossible with God. And just his word just keeps coming to me and reminding me of his promises. And suddenly I get to the end of the prayer and I'm just praising him. God, you are so wonderful. You are so good. Look at how you are just changing me and stretching me and growing me. And then you come to a place of gratitude. Thank you for these trials and tribulations, Lord. Thank you for, for me being weak. There's, you know, scripture that, that um, I think his brother Paul, who says that he glor glories in his infirmities, in his weakness, because when he is weak, then he is strong. When you are weak, that's where God comes in and makes you stronger. So you want to get to those points of weakness because there is strength happening there. And it's just so important that we have people who are going to pour that into us, right? But make sure you're able to pour it into yourself. I always encourage people, hashtag read your Bible, read your Bible. It's not boring. The stories in there are mind blowing. Some things, <laughs> some things you read in there are like, what? So read your Bible, have that word in you, have it living in your heart right? That's where you're going to find your hope. You're going to start to feel like, oh, this is a hopeless situation, but God's word says, and there is your enlightenment. So I really, really want you to, to take that in. Um, no matter the circumstance, remain faithful to God and he will remain faithful to you. It might be easy to say, you know what? I'm just going to go rob this bank because I can't stand the situation. Some people have gotten to that point. This is why you have, um, I don't know if you guys saw the video. There was like 13 or 14 people run into a Nike store and just start grabbing stuff. <laughs> they had hoods on and masks. They just start grabbing stuff. I, I want to believe that these people are not born malicious, but there are things that are happening in this world that are turning people to do malicious things because they are in helpless situations. People have to feed their families. People have to pay bills and get from here to there. And the car is broken down. All kinds of things are happening. And some people, you know, 
they just resort to evil, crime, because they need to get what they need to get to survive. But we know that staying faithful to God, saying, God, I can easily just swipe this. I, I true story, <laughs> a check blew onto my balcony worth $22,000. I know I've met people back in my days, teenage days, okay, they were in my 20s, who I just have to give them that check and we all get a cut. And if there is someone in a hopeless situation, they will be, they will feel like they are going to take that money. It's a $22,000 check. They would take that money and go and use it to feed their family, to pay for, pay their bills. They're not trying to do maliciousness within it. They're just trying to survive. And so being faithful to God means I see that check, but I'm going to just give it into the bank because it's not mine. I'm not going to steal this person's money. Now I'm creating a horrible situation for someone else because they only have that one $22,000. The person who they're supposed to pay is not getting their $22,000. And now they're out $22,000. So now where are they going to get another $22,000? Now they are forced to go out and rob a bank and do whatever they have to do to be able to meet the demands, the pressures, <laughs> the things that come into this life that we are responsible for. So remain faithful to God and he will remain faithful to you. We just got to hold on. It's not going to be easy, but we just got to pray every day and realize every day. One of the things that came to me in one of my hopeless situations is that I have everything I need for the day. There's nothing that I need today that I have to go steal and cheat and lie for. I'm okay. Let me pray to God. God, tomorrow, we didn't get it today, but tomorrow, God, you know, if they really need it, if I really need to pay that bill, please bless me and let me be able to pay that bill. Just stay faithful. Okay, God loves to see that and you will see the victory uh, on the other end of that. Stay mindful about the fact that the enemy is out there and salty because we continue to receive favor and gifts in situations that he designed to trip us up. So that's, I mean, the enemy, the devil, <laughs> the enemy, your enemy, hates, hates to see good things come out of the evil that he set up. He hates to see good things come out of the evil, hopeless situations that he sets up to bring us down, to turn us into criminals, to turn us into people who are not faithful to God. He loves to see that. And so we have to be mindful, okay? There are people out there, you don't want to believe in God. It means you don't believe in the enemy. The enemy is out there believing in you, using you in ways that are un unpleasing to God. And even though the enemy feels like he's winning, he's already lost and he knows that, but he's trying to bring you down with him too. And we got to fight that. We got to acknowledge that he's in that situation and not fall to his whims, not fall to his tricks and his lies and his cheating and his stealing and his destruction. We need to stay strong against that. Um, I wanted to leave you with a couple um, scriptures that you can bring back to mind whenever you feel like you're in a hopeful, hopeless, hopeful, hopeless situation. Uh, one of them is Genesis 50 verse 20. So this is, this comes at the very end um, of uh, Joseph's story. Well, not the very end, but close to the end where, you know, he finally reveals to his brothers that, you know, he is who he is. And so now they're all living in the castle. They're, they're down there. Pharaoh or Potiphar have set aside a, a plot of land for him and his family. Everything is right as rain, right? And if he had not done that, if Joseph had not gone through that hopeless, situ that hopeless situation, the entire land might not have had grain because he told Potiphar or Pharaoh, save up whatever's coming in this harvest because it's not going to be so for the next seven years. And because of that, the whole land was able to survive right to the point where his father and his brothers got a plot of land and they they had like a whole area just for themselves right so this is um the verse that comes after that it says but as for you you meant evil against me but god meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive so many people might have died had joseph not gone through this hopeless situation and the next verse is Romans 8:28 and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God 
to those who are the called according to his purpose. That was the verse I was messing up on before. It's Romans 8.28. I read it again. Uh, Romans 8.28 says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. And I'll read the other one again, Genesis 50.20. But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring about, as it is this day, to save many people alive. So just always think about the good that God is working in every situation. God is a good God. No matter what's happening in your life, God is a good God. He is not mad at you. He is not trying to get back at you or teach you in a less teach you a lesson in a malicious way. He loves you so much. He wants the best for you. Again, things that you prayed about, God said, okay, you want that thing? This is the path. <laughs> this is the path, hills and valleys. You're going to go through some valleys because I know where you want to get. And so it's up to us to, again, remain faithful to God. Remain faithful. The way you find hope in hopeless situations, you remain faithful to God. You look for the gifts. Look for the highlights in that situation. Prayer is going to be one of your number ones. Worship is another one. Getting around godly people who will also pray with you, who will, you know, give you the good word to make sure that you know the promises that are in there so that you can get through what you're going through and not fall, not succumb to any criminal or outlandish activity because you feel like you're in a desperate situation. I get it. I get it. Those situations do feel very desperate. But again, these are ways that we are being shaped. And so it's for us to identify what are the gifts here? What are the good things happening here? And then move forward knowing that you are being set up for a victory that is yet to be revealed. And it's going to be wonderful. And I can't wait to hear about it. I really wish you will tell me about it. So um, I'm going to leave you a couple ways to get in touch with me. Uh, first of all, you can find me on TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram um, under I am Sandra Gabriel. Uh, you'll see, you know, I'm going to be sharing messages, especially God has downloaded a, a bunch of stuff to me that I feel like are so super important to share. And I want you guys to get that message. So stay in touch with me on um, social media. You'll see a post there when I do have something coming up. So stay uh, with that. You can also um, join my guest list on SandraGabriel.com. Uh, just go to sandragable.com slash join and you'll see a form there. Just leave me your name and your email and I will be sure to send you a heads up when there is a live coming. Um, also, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube. Please come over to YouTube and be my subscriber. I promise to deliver as much value as possible. Um, I talk a lot about business and branding. Um, I've been in business for 19 years. I've been an entrepreneur for 19 years full time. And I have so much to share. Like I am literally a pit of resources, uh, a problem solver, a communicator um, that I feel like I'm gonna just start sharing a lot of what I know. You know, I feel like, okay, well, maybe it's nothing. Maybe everybody knows this. No, I've been told time and again that not everybody knows this and they would love a resource or someone who can kind of just walk them through some things, right? So definitely feel free to, um, to, uh, subscribe and then you will get a notification whenever there's a new video out. Um, I forgot to share this before, but if any of you wanted to read Joseph's story, you can go into Genesis, the book of Genesis from verse 39. Um, the verse that I read today was 20 to 23, but you can literally just read his whole story, right? It's, it's so fascinating. It's actually one of my favorite stories just because of how he went through those things. And guess what Joseph was doing a lot of times in the prison? He was he was praying like he was frustrated, but he was talking to God, you know, and in himself was like, you know, maybe if I just wait it out, you know, that all of this will be revealed. The victory will be revealed. The truth will be revealed. Right. So he was patient and he waited. And all of a sudden he's second in command in the land. All right, folks, that is all I have. Thank you so much, so much for joining this uh, this live stream. And I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.